What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight I want to show you uh, a small block Chevy blower motor that I'm building and the neat crankshaft that I'm using. Check so we have two small block Chevy crankshafts here. This one's just here for reference. This is the one I'm going to be using. This is just a cast crank. This is the forge crank. But this shot, you can see there's something a little different here. Uh, this crank that I'm using for this blower application, it has a big block snout, sometimes called a big block post. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this and, and doing a rebuild on this engine is for this actual reason right here. Um, this is for my buddy's uh, 383 Stroker. It's got a 671 blower and a 66 Chevelle. Um, and we, the first time we built the motor, it was just a real basic blower. We used, uh, we didn't use a cast crank. We used a forge crank, but same stock configuration like this. Uh, and it worked fine with the old blower. We end up switching to a bigger blower, a blower shop EFI blower, which is a Teflon strip blower, uh, and, and pushing things a little harder. And I end up cracking two balancers uh, and actually end up damaging the nose of the crank. So I was like, no one could really give me a reason why this happened. Uh, the, I thought maybe did I over tighten the blower belt? This is something I've dealt with before. Never had an issue with blower belt tightness, nothing like that. I checked everything. On the first one, I thought it was something I did wrong. The second one, I just wasn't sure, and I can't really get a real answer. The blower seems fine, because it's brand new. Uh, the belt tension, everything was fine, but we kept cracking uh, the balancers. We were using good ATI balancers. So the crank was damaged anyway, so I might as well went to the upgraded crank, which is right here, which is a, what you should use if you're actually running a decent blower. Some guys get get away with running uh, a normal snout, but obviously we were we we weren't getting away with it any longer, so we had to step it up to this. And this is what I wish I would have had when I originally built the car uh, back in 2013, 2014, something like that. Um, so this this is what we're going to now. Uh, when I was calling around trying to get this, no one could get me a crankshaft. Uh, but Scott at Ohio Crank, there's a sticker right there. He had one left that he ended up grinding and doing up for me. Uh, and I actually bought a whole rotating assembly off him. You can see in the background we got the H beam rods. Uh, we got G G pistons. Uh, there are dish pistons, 26 cc dish pistons. So we're we're doing a full um, rebuild on this. The, I'm going to be able to keep a, the engine didn't blow up or anything, so uh, the block is still good. It's a dart block, um, but I'm going to be just going for a full new rotating assembly, and then I'm going to be salvaging some of the other parts for another build. So it all works out. It's all good, and uh, but I'm really excited to use this this crankshaft. But let me show you some of the other stuff if you're thinking about going this crankshaft that you'll need because it's not just a crankshaft. Obviously, there's a few other things you'll need if you want to accommodate for this quick a couple of parts you'll need if you're thinking about running a big block snout on your small block chevy first off timing cover uh this is a milladon timing cover uh aluminum part number 14815 it's made with a big block um seal as you can see because you need the seal to cover over your new big block snout obviously different so i went with this specific cover because this is the only one that i could find that says it will work with a short water pump that's what i'm running on this car so i had to use this one uh with so i don't have to run into any major modifications this one they claims it works uh with it says will fit short water pump with minor caution so whatever that means so we'll find out how that all works out um the timing set so the timing set needs to be different as well. Uh, this is a Cloy's timing set, a good American made timing set. I'll put the part number up. And uh, so one thing of caution here, so obviously there's the bigger gear to fit the big block snout. Um, before on this car, I was actually running a step nose late model camshaft with the retaining plate because the, the dart block has provisions for, uh, for that, so I was running that. Uh, but I was thinking about switching camshafts anyway, and I'm glad I didn't buy a camshaft before uh, looking into this because I could not find a timing set that was actually made for the step nose um the step nose camshafts because the, the upper gear is different. So instead of trying to swap around timing sets and make things work, I could not find 
anything that was a direct fit. So since I wanted to buy a, a different camshaft anyway, I went to a retrofit, and that's what this is uh, designed to work with. You can see there's the thrust bearing. This is designed for a retrofit roller camshaft. So with the big block snout. So that's gonna all work out perfectly for us. And I, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I went with a Howard's Boost uh, camshaft, and I think it's gonna be a little bit of a better um, combination. It went a little aggressive on the first cam and it was hard to tune with the EFI. So I think this is gonna be a better set. Uh, but just remember that you can't, there, as far as I could find, there was no step nose gear set with the big blocks now on a small block Chevy. So just a uh, air of caution. So just if you're wondering, yes, this crank is also uh, dual keyway. And if you're not sure what that means, on blower applications, you'll oftentimes cut a, an, an extra keyway 180 degrees apart, apart from the, your normal keyway. Uh, it just helps when when you're driving the blower that it doesn't spin and break these keyways. Uh, if you're wondering, the old crank, this the normal snout crank that we ran before, was also drilled with both keyways using an ATI balancer, and we still managed to crack two of them. So uh, I still I'm not getting a full answer on why. I even talked to the blower shop. I've talked to quite a few supercharger guys, and it's kind of hit or miss. They're not really sure. Yeah, I can't give me a straight answer either. Um, I was thinking maybe something was wrong with the blower, uh, but nothing is checking out so far. So we're upgrading to this big block snout and we're going to run it on the dyno and see what happens. But, uh, I just wanted to show you guys this cool, some, something cool you don't see every day. So there you go, guys, a small block Chevy crank with a big block snout. Very smart idea. If you're running, um, a, a blower driven application or anything like that, even to trifocal blower. It's putting, uh, blowers put a lot of stress um, pulling upwards on this, uh, on this small little snow, especially when you're running that little shaft on a small block Chevy. So um, it's if you're doing a blower motor, it's just a good idea. And if you are looking at getting a rotating assembly, don't just jump to the big guys right away. Check these guys out, Ohio crankshaft. I couldn't be happier with it. I've been checking the bearing clearances. Everything's bang on. The polishing is great. Everything is looking fantastic. And Scott down at Ohio crankshaft's really good guy to deal with. Uh, super easy, gets back to you fast, and uh, their prices are really good. So check them out. Uh, again, this is not this is not a sponsored anything. I just like to give a shout out when you have a small company that puts out nice work like this. So check them out, guys. I'll see you later.